hello students so today we are going to uh, discuss the tissue culture and uh, uh, we are we have started the enhancements of food production lesson and that we have finished the introductory part we have studied the various steps which are involved in the hybridization technique so we have discussed a uh, different kinds of indian hybrid crops their names a uh, different charts the different pest uh, uh, controlling or pest resistant disease resistant plants okay so today we are going to discuss about this tissue culture uh, it is actually a collection of different techniques it is uh, in fact emerged as a technique of plant biotechnology so tissue culture is the plant it is emerged as the branch of plant biotechnology or it is involved in the plant biotechnology here isolated cells tissues organs they are grown in vitro on a solid or liquid nutrient medium so whatever cells or tissues or organs they are isolated they are uh, grown on a solid or liquid nutrient medium in the lab under aseptic conditions, controlled conditions of light, humidity and temperatures. So this is very important because they require different light, uh, humidity, temperature. It should be maintained. Uh, if you are talking about the artificial growth of isolated cells, tissues or organs. For achieving different objectives, it is very much important to consider, uh, take into consideration the nutrient medium which can be solid or liquid or, and the different uh, conditions like light, humidity and temperature. The part of the plant used in the tissue culture is called as explant. So this, this term that is explant can be asked here for the exam uh, for a very short answer question so this is very important you must remember that what is explant so explant is nothing but a, sh a part of the plant it can be a short uh, segment of a plant which can be used in the tissue culture technique so plant tissue culture is based on principle of totipotency Plant tissue culture is actually based on the methodology or the technique that is called as totipotency. So we have studied the totipotent cell, the cell which has the ability to grow. So we can inherit ability of living plant cells to grow, divide and re-divide and give rise to a whole plant. So that type of totipotency is the basic principle or main principle which is considered uh, while talking about plant tissue culture so this cell culture when it is in vitro then that is also known as plant morphogenesis plant morphogenesis is another term for the artificial cell culture this is very important because in that we grow we are able to grow a plant in the lab artificially in the test tube or in the uh, flask whatever glass material you are talking about okay so on that you grow the plant whole plant so the plant tissue culture medium contains all essential mineral sources for carbohydrates, proteins and fats and water, growth hormones, vitamins and agar for the callus culture. Now these are very basic requirement for the plant tissue culture. It is very much essential that that uh, agar medium the name of the medium is agar agar which is used for the growth of the plant tissue okay so uh, the medium it must contain that contains essential minerals which are 
required for the growth of the plant they are the so there are sources of carbohydrates proteins fats water and growth hormones and of course vitamins so the most commonly preferred medium for the tissue culture is ms now this ms medium you have to remember this name thus it can be used it is used commonly for the plant growth in the plant, plant tissue culture so based on the nature of the explant there are three types with uh, cell structure cell culture organ culture and embryo culture these are the three important types of the explant based on the type of in vitro growth there are two types that is callus culture it can be done on solid medium and suspension culture suspension culture the plants or the growth of the plant it is carried out in the medium which is liquid in nature callus is grown on solid medium and suspension cultures they are allowed to grow in the liquid medium now, this is very important maintenance of uh, aseptic conditions aseptic conditions are required for the growth artificial growth of the plant the septic condition is essential so as to avoid contamination why we need this because we don't want any contamination in our tissue culture by other harmful bacteria or other harmful microorganisms and it is accomplished by sterilization sterilization is another terminology sterilization means 100 percent uh, contaminant free environment or that procedure is called as sterilization when there is no contamination zero percent contamination so glasswares uh, use of detergents hot air oven hot air oven is used in the lab for the sterilization process and the nutrient medium it should be again sterilized so glasswares they are sterilized by the use of detergents and they uh, can also be uh, sterilized by the hot air ovens nutrient media which are used they are uh, they by autoclave under constant pressure uh, for 20 minutes when they are kept under pressure they are having different uh, autoclaving machines okay so by this autoclaving we get a sterilized nutrient medium explant it is also treated with the ethyl alcohol and hcl so inoculation chamber and explant after that inoculation chamber laminar airflow is used when we want to inoculate or we want to use transfer or culture our plant tissue so uh, that is done under this uv ray tube for one hour before performing actual inoculation explant on this sterilized nutrient medium it is carried out now you can see this is mother plant this is a test tube this is cotton and this is explant this is solid medium nutrient medium on which the explant is uh, inoculated after that it grows as a nutrient medium contains all the requirements which are needed for the growth of the plant so it forms a callus and then a complete plant that is shoot root system shoot system that is called as organogenesis organogenesis means when there is organ formation of the plant so that is carried out artificially in the test tube then that uh, after organogenesis that plant is transferred to the pot okay other conditions which are maintained uh, they are temperature pH of the nutrient medium, aeration particularly for the suspension culture. So in callus culture, the solid medium is used. The development and organization of tissue is lost. 
has the cells of explant, divide and redivide to form a mass of undifferentiated cells. What is callus? Callus is nothing but when the cells of the explant they divide and redivide to form a mass of undifferentiated cells. Then that structure is called as callus. It is maintained on solid medium as we are talking about callus culture. So callus culture, it is always maintained by the solid medium. Uh, so callus can be induced to form organs like root, uh, rhizogenesis and shoot that is collagenesis and thus the plantlet a complete plant. No shaker or agitator is needed. As here we are talking about solid media, so no shaking is required. While in case of suspension uh, culture, the constant mixing of the medium is very much important as the medium is liquid. Okay, so small groups of cells or a single cell are used as explant in the liquid medium. The liquid medium is constantly agitated, agitated by using shakers and that machine is called as agitator where that flask or that liquid culture or suspension culture is uh, continuously or constantly agitated for the mixing of the medium. So both the callus and suspension cultures, they die in due course of time, therefore Subculturing is necessary. Subculturing for the continuation of the technique. Now, micro propagation, that is clonal propagation. What is that? Organogenesis via shoots is considered as one of the most widely used commercial method of regeneration of plant. Micro propagation is also known as clonal propagation clones where we propagate where we get clones in multiple amount or in maximum number or in in the uh, maximum amount we get clones then that type of uh, methodology is called as clonal propagation it is the only process adopted by indian plant indian plant biotechnologists Different industries mainly for the commercial production of ornamental plants like orchids uh, and different plants, the fruit plants like banana, grape, citrus, etc. They are for that the methodology is used. Now, what are the advantages of the micro propagation? It helps in rapid multiplication of plants. So we get rapid multiplication of the plants by the method called as micro propagation a large number of plantlets are obtained so we get plenty amount or plantlets in abundant amount within a short period of time now this is very much important and the space which is required for their growth is again very small uh, plants are obtained throughout the year under control conditions uh, independent of season so the throughout the year we can get the plants they can be obtained but the thing is there must be controlled conditions genetically similar plants like they are called as clones they are produced or they are formed by this method therefore desirable characters like genotype and desired sex of superior variety are kept constant for many generations the rare plant and endangered species are multiplied by this method and such plants are set. So that's all. And with the help of somatic hybrids, we are able to obtain new variety in short time. So that's all about micropropagation. Now what is single cell protein? By 2050, the world would need to produce 1,250 million tons of meat and dairy products per year. Just imagine the amount to meet the global demand for animal derived protein at current consumption levels. So, however, growing demand for protein will not be met sustainably by increasing meat and dairy production because of the low efficiency of converting feed to meat and dairy products. 
So for that, human population is underdeveloped and even in the developing countries is suffering from protein malnutrition. So for that, the resulting into variety of nutritional diseases. To fight with this, efforts are undertaken by the conventional methods to increase the food yield by different methods of crop improvement. And for improving the crop, what is required? Use of biofertilizers, biopesticides, chemical fertilizers, and high yielding varieties. That is, we are talking about green revolution. The efforts in the other uh, direction are also undertaken in conventional way. Uh, one such way is production of SCP, that is the production of single cell protein. This is again very much important. Importance of SCP was realized during World War I. Okay, so, so single cell protein, what is that? It refers to crude or refined edible protein extracted from pure microbial cultures of, or from dead or dried cells or biomass that is called as single cell protein. So microorganisms like algae, fungi, yeast and bacteria have very high protein content and their biomass. That is required for the growth of them. So uh, these microbes can be grown is by using inexpensive substrates like agricultural wastes, wood shavings, sawdust, corn cobs, paraffin, and alkanes, sugarcane molasses, even human animal waste. So these can be grown on such substrates. The microorganisms utilize carbon and nitrogen present in these materials and convert them into high quality proteins. So what happens when they are grown on the substrates? They utilize the carbon and nitrogen present in these materials and convert them into high quality protein that can be used as a supplement in both human and animal feed which is very very important as far as this single cell protein is concerned okay so besides proteins scp or single cell protein is also rich in vitamins what it contains it is rich in vitamins a vitamin b complex minerals and fats so it is rich in its content the single cell proteins can be readily used as fodder for achieving fattening of calves, pigs, in breeding fish, and even in poultry and cattle farming. The microorganisms used for them are fungi, Aspergillus niger can be used, yeast, Saccharomyces cerevis is used, uh, algae, any one name you have to remember, okay? Advantages of single cell protein. So microorganisms have high rate of multiplication that means a large quantity of biomass can be produced in a short duration. This is very important because here we are talking about the advantages of single cell protein. The microbes can be easily genetically modified. They can be genetically modified and uh, it can be done in the biotechnological labs. They have high protein content. Broad variety of raw materials including waste materials can be used as a substrate for single cell protein. This also helps in decreasing the number of pollutants and single cell protein serves as good source of vitamins, amino acids and minerals or root fibers. So this is the last advantage of single cell protein. See, a, a short note can be asked in the exam. For that, you have what you have to do is you have to prepare the important points of this. Okay, when you are talking about the single cell protein, now the material is enough for uh, uh, four marks. So the question can be asked for three marks. Okay, so that is very much essential that you must study all the things which are given in the single cell protein another part is this flow chart this flow chart is required uh, these are the techniques which are used for 
the tissue culture so this part again you have to remember prepare a flow chart and try to understand it okay memorize it another thing is this diagram can be asked separately steps which are involved in the plant tissue culture that is also called as callus culture so this diagram you have to remember and of course the steps which are required and we have studied the two different media uh, the nutrient media which are used one is solid another is liquid so their characteristics can be asked and of course the micro propagation their advantages of this uh, technique tissue culture and all it can be asked the advantages of micro propagation okay so that part you have to prepare so that's all for today's session let's talk about uh, this another part of this lesson that is uh, i think uh, we have finished this biofortification we are going to study animal husbandry and dairy and farm management poultry management and all okay so that part is again very uh, easy and don't take uh, the lesson so casually please do read the lesson while uh, listening the lecture you must have textbook with you please read the lesson before you listen the video or listen the lecture it is very important as we are running and uh, we are discussing lots of points and there are a number of concepts which are new to you so don't miss a single point even if the weightage of this lesson is very less but uh, uh, exam point of view this lesson is very important so don't miss it do prepare your notes and keep reading keep studying that's all for today's session thank you